Hungerford Bridge and the two Golden Jubilee footbridges cross the Thames in London between the South Bank Centre and the embankment in front of Charing Cross Railway Station. It is estimated that over 8.5 million use the footbridges each year. But in the 1990s, before the Golden Jubilee footbridges were open, it was a lot different, as was London. This video aims to highlight the changes along with history through the use of contemporary photos and video shot in 2022. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images. Make sure you stay to the end to see everything that has changed and also what has not. Some is quite surprising. This is a picture of the Golden Jubilee Bridges in 2003, a year after they were opened, with the white suspension towers that hold the bridges up, one on either side of the rail bridge. Charing Cross Railway Station looms large over the bridges in the background. This video was taken in 2022, showing the west side of the bridges as they ran over the River Thames to the Victoria Embankment. The bridge on this side comes down via steps to the Victoria Embankment just in front of the green wooden cabman shelter. There's also a lift making the bridge far more accessible. From this angle it is also possible to get a good idea of the scale of the suspension towers on the footbridge. Moving further down the embankment, this shot was taken in the late 1990s from the North Bank opposite County Hall. Looking at the skyline, there is a lot less in this photo than there is in 2022. From this angle in 2022, both sides of the Golden Jubilee Bridge can be seen, with the impressive Millennium Wheel, or London Eye, on the right. Going back to the 1990s, this is when the Millennium Wheel was under construction, as can be seen from the steel work in the water, and there was no footbridge at all on the west side of the Hungerford Bridge. Zooming in gives us a closer view of the railway bridge before the footbridge was added. This is also another good angle to see in the distance just how much the skyline has changed. This is a picture of the pedestrian crossing in 1997 and this is a video of the Golden Jubilee replacement in 2022. The Golden Jubilee footbridges on both sides of the Hungerford Rail Bridge opened in 2002. It was estimated in 2014 that there is a footfall of 8.5 million each year, making it the busiest bridge in London. As you can see, a lot has changed both with the new bridge and the surrounding area. Going back to the 1997 image, the footbridge can clearly be seen painted red. From my memory, the bridge was always busy, as is the replacement now. It is a great way to cross the Thames when going from London Waterloo Railway Station or the South Bank Centre across to the Embankment, Charing Cross and the West End. There were, however, several issues with it. The footbridge was actually attached to the railway bridge, which meant the pedestrians were very close to the trains and could feel the vibrations and hear the noise as the trains crossed the bridge going to and from London Charing Cross. Accessibility was also a major issue. As well as being very narrow, it was only accessible via stairs. Moving on to a slightly different view from 1997, the footbridge can be seen in the context of the South Bank, with the Royal Festival Hall and South Bank Centre straight ahead, and as far as Waterloo Bridge on the left. What is really noticeable is how empty the skyline was. Look at an image from 2022, there are a lot of changes. There are so many I will be doing a separate video on the amazing changing skyline. This view shows the bridge in relation to Charing Cross Railway Station in the background. The new bridge joins a walkway that is a step free path all the way into Charing Cross Railway Station. Of immediate note is that there is now a gap between the footbridge and the rail bridge, which significantly reduces the impact from vibration on the pedestrians as trains pass by. The rather grand brick buttress that can be seen here used to support the old footbridge. An idea of just how narrow the footbridge was can be seen here as it is roughly the same depth as the exposed area of the buttress. The new footbridges are far more comfortable 4 metres wide on both sides. 
An interesting fact is that these brick buttresses, there are two, are older than the railway line. The original crossing was built by Isambard Kingdom Brunel in 1845 as a suspension bridge. It was a footbridge and named after the Hungerford Market. It was purchased to extend the South Eastern Railway into Charing Cross Station. If we look at a view of the whole bridge from the Westminster side, we can see the two buttresses. The buttress on the Charing Cross side, the left in this picture, is now right up against the river bank rather than further out in the river as it was originally. This is because land was reclaimed when the Victoria Bankment, opened in 1870, was constructed. This can be seen here with a view from the embankment, showing the buttress with the railway bridge leading to Charing Cross Station. To compensate for the loss of footbridge, one was added to the side of the tracks. There were many issues with the footbridge, so in the mid-1990s a competition was held to select a new design. Unfortunately, the need for a new crossing was reinforced when there was a murder on the bridge in 1999. An interesting feature of this bridge is the unofficial skateboard graveyard seen here. There are often far more broken skateboards, but this video was shot shortly after a council clean-up. From some internet research, it appears that the graveyard grew organically following the tragic murder of a skateboarder in 1999 from the old bridge. Skaters throw broken boards and trainers onto this pier. The South Bank Undercroft, seen here, has long been used as a skate park and is where many of the boards get broken as the skaters do ever more challenging and daring moves, which unfortunately I didn't get to film any of. Looking from Waterloo Bridge, the skate park can be seen on the left and to the right, the skateboard graveyard. We now move to just in front of the South Bank Centre in 2022. We can see a very vibrant area, including shops, restaurants, cafes and a large stepped area. This is very much a place for pedestrians. Going back to a picture from January 2000, it can be seen the area was quite different. The pedestrian area was then a road and cars can be seen parked along here. Where shops now are was an undercroft. In the distance, the brand new Millennium Wheel or London Eye had just been constructed and the old red footbridge was still very much in use. Zooming in, we can make out the old steps up to the footbridge. Looking at the same view in 2022, it is staggeringly different. The new footbridge is in use. It has two sets of steps down, one to the embankment, another to the Royal Festival Hall, and there is a lift. Shops have filled the undercroft, and part of the concrete wall has been replaced with glass. The road is pedestrianised, with steps connecting to the embankment. The Millennium Wheel, or London Eye, 22 years on, is still going strong. This view from the South Bank shows the complexity of the footbridge, how it is supported both by independent piers in the Thames, but is also attached to the railway bridge. This also gives a clear view of Brunel's brick buttress, with a good indication of how narrow the old bridge was as it only extended to the buttress's edge. You can also hear how noisy the trains are. This is a view under the west side of the bridge, again highlighting the complexity of the construction. Building the two new footbridges held numerous challenges, not least building next to a busy railway line that could not be shut, as well as in very close proximity to the Bakerloo Underground Line, and also the ever-present risk in London of World War II unexploded bombs in the riverbed. The two footbridges were opened in 2002, 50 years after Queen Elizabeth came to the throne, and were named the Golden Jubilee Bridges in recognition. However, all three crossings, the two footbridges and the rail, are normally just referred to as the Hungerford Bridge. Moving slightly further down the river, we get a good view of the west side of the bridge and the buttress closer to the south bank. It has an entrance and steps for the steamer boat pier on Brunel's original bridge. It also helps give an idea of how busy the area is. As well as the footbridge, 
There is a boat going under and a train leaving Charing Cross Station. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how things have changed around this fantastic area of London. Please subscribe and select alerts for future videos. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images.